Beyond the Lines, folks. My name is Sarah. I'm the artist band Vintage the Geschichten. And today it's the second to last part for the Outlander coloring book page. That looks like this when it's finished. And today I'm going to take care of all the curtains. The ones around the window and the one in front of the bed. So uh, I'm going to talk to you about how I color fabric, how I shade fabric and how I want to have things pushed in the background, choosing colors for that and also choosing colors for the age that uh, I'm depicting here, so 1700s. And I'm also talking to you about contrast, so especially how to um, contrast these two different kinds of curtains but not have them look too different though. So join me. Time to, well, work on the curtains. I already zoomed in so let me quickly show you like this. Okay, da, 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 da. this is where I left off last time and this time like I had said in the intro I want to uh, work on the curtain. This part here in particular because that is behind the lines when it comes to oh there's already colored sections here and then I want to go on to the left hand side which means that I'm not going to smudge anything because my hand is just going to be here. But I do have my trusty piece of paper so Claire and Jamie are going to be uh, covered now because I don't want to smudge what I already colored there and I want to uh, be able to color this curtain. <coughs> now colors, right? Mm. So far I have a lot of browns and uh, yellows in my coloring page and that is because of the scene that is depicted here when you have the fireplace and Claire has a yellow and brown uh, dress uh, when she is described in the book, which I went for. I do have a little bit of the blue and a little bit of the green, both here, uh, here in the leaves and also the kilt, and also here uh, with the sky and the uh, trees or bushes outside Castle Lier. Now I want to have the curtains be in the background. These are the two here are the focal point. However, um, I also want to have color repetition. Now the browns would definitely just, well, make this um, like the bed here, the headboard. It would just be a block of brown it would there would not you would hardly be able to distinguish between the foreground and the background and the curtain and the bed and all of that so brown is out of the question for me because i definitely want to have contrast there i'm planning to have this part here uh brown later so uh well i can only use so much of the brownish tones i also had said that the orange here and the blue in jamie's kilt are the two colors that stand out with him and that with claire it is the lemon yellow um corsage corsa, corset bodice whatever you want to call it right that thing so um i don't want to go for these colors in the curtains either because these have to stand out so i cannot work with color repetition there and blend everything in what i can do though is have green so the greens that i already used and i do have all of the pencils that i already used here next to me there's two greens one of them is more of an olive green which i used <coughs> excuse me on the um on the uh mantelpiece on the fireplace and then there's the other green that I used here on the leaves and also in the background there. So I got the two of them and for now I'm actually um, looking to have both used and layer them for the patterns here. I want to have 
the tassels, I want to have them in a golden tone. So um, they, that would actually fit very well with uh, the dark greens and also with a dark blue or dark purple. Now for the dark blue, I already used this one here, which I'm also going to reuse. I'm going to bring in the black for the super dark shadows. Other than that, I didn't use any dark blue, but next to me, I do have a bluish purple. So let's take the testing part here. This is the bluish purple with blue on top. I think that would make for a nice tone. Alternatively, I also do have a warm violet kind of a way more reddish tone which uh, would look something like this i'm preferring the uh, cold purple because that will push the background uh, the the curtain into the background again i had said it um very often actually in different kinds of episodes of this show here cold colors push into the back warm colors bring to the front so by choosing the warm blue and uh, the yeah the warm blue and the cold purple i'm pushing the curtains into the background a bit more which then again pulls jamie and claire even more to the foreground so <coughs> enough of the to oh i forgot i have to have the yellow for the tassels and i'm just gonna go with yellow ochre and the sun yellow which i also used for the fireplace so we got color repetition there also these two are the opposite on the color wheel from these two. So they make each other stand out. And by having the gold layered on top of the, um, no, that's the light green, is it? Where's the gold? There's the gold, there's the gold. Uh, by having the gold layered on top of the yellows, um, the tassel will look a little, more in the foreground, a little more, uh, well, interesting. So I'm just wondering, am I zoomed in enough? Ah, let's, let's go in a little more, right? Boop. Something like this. Because I want you to see things when I do things. That's, <coughs> excuse me, that's kind of the idea here. So I'm starting off with the uh, olive green and I'm just going all around that bit of curtain and I'm just gonna give the uh, embroidery a solid green layer just to distinguish where's what part to be colored And I do like to section off things like that. I have said it in this show so many times, especially on this coloring page here that I'm currently working on. I've said it so many times, but it is very true when you have a full scenery of things and when there is a lot that you could get lost in with the line work. I find it very helpful to section things off to not get overwhelmed or get lost in the coloring page. There we go. Now I'm going to bring in the other green and I'm going to shade the embroidery, not the curtain per se. I'm going to use black for that. But the embroidery here will probably, since it is, uh, well, rather luxurious, maybe. Uh, I think it will have two colors of thread used. So, uh, 
I'm just going to give it a bit of interest. Not too much, not too much detailing. Again, this is supposed to be the background. So um, I want to show that this is a wonderful piece of art here and that the embroidery is done very well. But I don't want the viewer to be drawn to the curtain first before they are drawn to Jamie and Claire. But when you move your eye around the uh, coloring page, there has to be enough interest there to uh, <coughs> find something cool in these parts of the curtain. So I'm just going one more time on top with the um, olive green just to blend everything together. And now I can change things up and go in with the purple and the blue. I'm going to start with a very light layer of the purple, just going around the uh, embroidered bits here on the curtain. Very light touch. Very softly giving this the first layer. <coughs> I actually didn't film for a couple of days. Um, between this uh, part here and the last part but still, ah, the cough is still not gone. It's getting better, definitely. But when I'm uh, filming and I'm talking a lot, like I do here today, and this is the second video that I'm filming today, I'm definitely still feeling the cough, which annoys me to no end. But well, um, I'm going on top with the dark blue to darken things up, make them richer. And I'm uh, coloring in little circles and ellipses or long ovals to make this look smooth right away. Because I'm not planning to have 50 layers. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Because, again, this is the background. I don't want this to be as saturated and as finished as the foreground is. All these tools help with pushing certain objects into the background. I also have no trouble to go with the blue on top of the green. That is totally fine for me. Giving a bit of blue here. There we are. And uh, forgot a bit of the second layer of the green here. And uh, now I can go in with the yellow for 
the cord with the tassels, shading it with the yellow ochre. A little more of the yellow. Bringing the gold on top just to have a little bit of a glimmer going on when you look at from the right angle. And then I can bring in the black <coughs> and very, very softly shade. So there's going to be, the, the light comes from this side. So uh, the left hand side here is hit by the light, but um, the right hand side is a bit more in the dark, in the shadow. The firelight does not get to this point. Uh, and here on these folds you can see the shading best or the darker pieces best. So going with black on top. Very lightly though, I really just want a little bit of a darker color. Would I have a little more uh, variety in the blue pencils? Especially the dark warm blues. I would definitely not employ the black. Uh, but I don't, so this is the closest I get to. A dark blue color so going on top like this <coughs> a little more up here and then I can bring in the blue once more to blend it out a little bit need another cough drop to be able to get through and I'm coloring on top of the green with my blue here. Again, I'm using the lightest touch. I'm really just like a feather going on top. I know that my fingers here look like I'm really putting down pressure. I am not. I'm just holding my pencil really firmly. But I'm just because I uh, have pressure like this doesn't mean that I have pressure when I go down on the paper. I uh, am very gentle that way. Now what I'm going to do here on the left hand side of the curtain, I'm just going to add a bit of a shadow here on the wall just a bit to well, bring all the items, all the bits and pieces together adding a little more of the dark here because there is the majority of the shadow here on those folds And a little more blue to blend things out. There we go. A little bit more of the yellow ochre here to clean things up. And a bit more of the olive green just to saturate the paper a bit more and get rid of a few of those white spots there we are so this is really pushed back far so I can now go to the other side. 
The wood here will have the same color as the headboard. So uh, that will be pulled into the front area. And here on the curtain, you can see that there is kind of like a seam and outline. And I will use the same golden color for that as I did, uh, as I will use for the tassels here, just to give interest uh, to that bit here as well. So I'm starting with the yellow again. And then I'm distracted because <laughs> I got a notification. Ah. Let's see. And I am back. The uh, magic of editing. Just quickly had to chat with my mom. Because it's actually New Year's Eve, uh, not New Year's Eve, New Year's Day that I'm recording this. So we had a little chat. I'm uh, coloring this part here in the gold, like I had said. And with these kinds of pencils, or actually all of the pencils, colored pencils that I have. doesn't matter if it is the polychromos or if it is uh, the lower, what are they, classic color um, brand of the Faber-Castells. Um, the metallic pencils are, uh, uh, let's put it this way, they're, yeah, they're great to layer on top of something, but they don't hold enough to just have one piece colored in gold and make it look interesting. And I'm, by the way, using medium heavy hand here to layer the gold on top. I have a nice shimmer when I look against the light. That's great, but you need colors underneath to uh, have a little bit of shading and interest and stuff going on, which is pretty much with any um, metallic colored pencil that I ever tried so far, no matter the brand and no matter the price for the pencil. So that was that. Now I'm going on to the embroidery again. And uh, I'm gonna give it a, uh, uh, what's it called? Olive green. <laughs> oh, words. Sometimes they really don't come easy. And uh, by the way, who's singing now? I'm in my head. Uh, but uh, I'm giving this a... Uh, olive green layer, all of the embroidery, doing the same thing as I did with the other curtain. I will probably add a little more um, shading or the shading itself, the detail a little more carefully on this curtain here because it is way closer to the viewer than the other one is. So there will be more detail visible. But for now, I'm just adding the first layer. There's no difference to the um, other curtain in the way I apply the color. It's just, just to get started here. Now we go, is this another curtain than the other one? Ah, because this is a way different kind of a pattern. It seems they are two different ones. So these are for the windows and this is for the bed. Hmm. Okay, 
so let's color them differently. They look differently. I haven't, I didn't even realize that before. So then let's push this one into the background a lot and have it colored just like the other curtain when it comes to how much detail is visible. Hardly any because it is across the room and the embroidery wasn't... Uh, it, it doesn't look like... Uh, <coughs> it is so intricate that you could see it like from five meters away. Hmm. I didn't realize that. That's weird now. It kind of... Ah, uh, okay, so it uh, is not perfect with the plan now on how I wanted this to be structured. But then again, I could have looked right away and uh, have could have realized right away, oh, this is different here. The pattern is different, the line work is different, the even the width of the line work is totally different between the two parts. But, well, that happens. Uh, I think it happens to pretty much any color colorist or artist. So, um, well, let's just work with it. And I, while I am coloring in the uh, purple on the window curtain. I'm going to think about what color I want for the uh, bed curtain or whatever it is. Uh, well, maybe it's more like an alcove. I don't know. It's yeah, da da. I can make it whatever I want it to be. Hmm. Maybe I just go with a slightly different purple bluish tone. Maybe with the red violet one that I um, tested earlier and have it mainly be the same but not totally maybe not have the green in there but only the purple blue and yellow yeah why not actually that's kind of a good idea but I will have to check again when I'm done with this part of the curtain, of the window curtain here. So, purple's down, can go to the blue. It kind of annoys me, I honestly have to say, because um, I've been staring at this coloring page for quite a long time, over and over again. Um, uh, many days in a, in a row for all the other uh, video parts that I already um, recorded for this, plus another day beforehand when I was planning out uh, what I wanted to show you in this uh, for the for this uh, coloring page and uh, thinking about. Uh, what colors I might want to use and uh, what the TV show did depict and how it uh, is described in the book and such. So I've been prepping for uh, on, on one day um, and then I've been filming three or four more days already. I don't remember actually. This is part seven think, yeah, three days. I think I have filmed two videos per day. Um, and now I'm uh, just realizing that, oh, there's something else there. There's uh, something that I assumed and that is not correct. 
and now I have to work around it. So yeah, slightly annoyed, but definitely not totally frustrated, not at all, because I realized early enough um, that these are two different curtains and also even if I would not have realized it I would have been able to make it work maybe not as seamlessly and as effortlessly as I can do now that I have realized my my little tiny mistake there but um, I can definitely work with it Okay, giving this a little more dark blue here on the <coughs> on the seam, and then going in with very light hand of black, following the uh, folds here in the curtain. Also, this is in the shadow. There is no light hitting it. Quite a bit of dark actually on this particular side here. Gonna blend out the. I'm not in frame. Great, Sarah. I'm sorry, folks. Ah. Um, gonna blend out the black into the blue. Gonna go on top uh, of this coloring here with the blue once more. But for now, just gonna blend out the black, make it as, as smooth in transition as possible, but adding a little more here on those folds, let them stand out. I can go in with blue once more. Gotta sharpen my pencil a bit. Going on top of the green. And I'm going to intensify some of the folds here or what looks to be like folds with the blue not with the black to not have it too dark all over the place. But what I'm also gonna do is go around Claire's hair here and like I did on other occasions before in the previous videos, I'm just going to bring her hair a bit more to the foreground by intensifying the black lines around it. Because I lost a bit of detail there with uh, all the pencils here on top 
for coloring the hair and the curtains so just to not lose that detail I'm going on top with my uh, black pencil just to bring him back a bit it will bring Claire to the foreground again okay there's the blue now the other curtain so uh, I don't want to have the green in there actually like the idea of the blue and the purple and the uh, yellow gold but I'm wondering maybe I should change up the purples let's see testing piece here is a little too intense for my personal taste <coughs> Yeah, I, I like the warm purple with the blue. I'm still keeping the cold purple because I might um, add all three of them, all three colors together and make things a little more, well, um, defined and finished to pull it into the foreground. So I'm going to start with being in frame, that's a good thing, um, with the yellow patterns. So I'm going to treat that as embroidery as well. So I will use the yellow and then shade them with the uh, yellow ochre maybe even a bit of brown I haven't decided on that yet kind of difficult <laughs> to find all the sections that I need to color here because it could very easily be that I accidentally color uh, white space or soon to be dark blue space but well, just have to double check. Yeah, some people don't know that it's New Year's Day and they still have a few fireworks. So sorry for background noise that I might not be able to edit out. This is really difficult to see some of the parts that I'm supposed to color or not to color. Uh, when in doubt, color it yellow. That's a good, good uh, way to start. not taking care of the tassels yet I will do that later on but I guess all of this here could be yellow like border
may have to zoom out a little bit soon if I cannot manage to stay in frame all the time. Sorry about that. I got it all I think so let's start with the uh, yellow ochre and bring in some shading on things and some interest and in detail so I'm just gonna play with the patterns here that are given to me And I'm just going to add a bit of the yellow ochre here and there. Just to have a little bit of interest. Not even going to bring in a second layer of the yellow everywhere. Just here and there. more again I'm not really shading the uh, curtain yet that will be done at the very end just like I did with the other window curtain but I'm just adding a little bit of colorful interest here and there to the uh, to the fabric. I don't like to work on the folds or in the ditch here, so I'm going to turn my uh, coloring page and I'm going to color this upside down because it is quite uncomfortable for me otherwise to uh, color with the ditch here.
I'm hoping that I can finish the curtain today so that next time I only have to uh, finish the wood and the candle and such to uh, have this then be the final part of the video. I'm hoping I might run a little longer today if I cannot manage to finish the curtain within the two hours that I set as a maximum for these videos. But I'm trying to um, have them done in two hours. I'm not going to apply gold to that yellow pattern here. Um, that will only be at the tassel. There's a dog going crazy outside my window. <laughs> okay. Just a little more. Now I just need to have the border colored for this uh, pattern here. Darkening up the inner part of the curtain. There we go. And now I can go on to the purples. I'm gonna layer the purple underneath the blue. And I'm gonna start here. Just with a light touch, as per usual, just going to fill in the white bits. And then I can go bit by bit and already layer the blue on top. I will shade all in one go with the black in a minute when I have pretty much the whole curtain uh, colored with the purple and the blue but I can layer the purple and blue on top of each other right away section by section <coughs> like so it's enough of a difference between the two curtains but it's not too much of a difference so that it would be pulled too much into the foreground if you know what i mean um 
It is still a subtle difference, but it is a visible difference between the two different kinds of fabrics. So I'm going fold by fold here. Oh, there's another fold that I hadn't finished. And blue on top. And by using two different kinds of colors on top of each other, you can create your own color. And uh, if you're missing a shade in your color set, then uh, you can be probably uh, helped out with just layering two colors. Uh, on top of each other like I do here. So that uh, is a nice thing to know, I guess, when you don't have to rely on the colors that, that you're given only, but you can mix your own and make colors or different shades of colors with uh, different kinds of pencils that you have. You don't have to have a pencil with a certain shade already. So the next fold uh, for that, I'm going to turn my page again because the ditch, the ditch is there. So paper moves to the other side and anything above the cord with the tassel or in this case below the cord with the tassel because I turned the page it is going to get purpled that's a verb it is now I made it up if it wasn't one before it's now and I'm going with a very light hand light touch here I'm just filling in all the white spaces There we go, and the blue on top. To mix with the purple.
And now I'm going on to the lower part here. Anything below the tassel. just very tiny spots that uh, I have to color here like this one underneath the tassel. It's so easy to overlook them. Uh, so it's almost like a, uh, like a puzzle or something like that to find all of the pieces that you gotta color with the two shades. For the ditch part, again, I'm going to turn the book upside down because it is just so much easier to get into these sections here. And I encourage you to turn your work not only for your wrist to be comfortable and uh, you're not cramping up on your hand, but also for getting into uh, certain parts of the coloring book a bit better. Layering the blue on top. And after that, I will start shading the curtain. And I'm going to use the blue and the black for that. And well, <coughs> we'll uh, I will work uh, on the tassels and the cord only after that. I want to have the fabric finished before I go to the tassels here. Of course I have to shade around the tassels onto the fabric right away, though the tassels aren't uh, colored yet, but that's that's fine. I have no problem doing so. I just want to have the fabric done. <laughs> I could color the tassels first and then shade uh, the fabric all and or the whole curtain all in one go. But I kind of just want to have the um, fabric done here. So let's get to shading. <coughs> first the upper part. Uh, I could actually zoom out for that bit. You uh, don't need to see details that much, but more like the whole curtain or most of the curtain. So let's line you up. There we go. And I'm going in with black. The light is coming from the window, which doesn't hit that curtain. It comes from the candle, which doesn't really hit the curtain a lot. A little bit down here, but the wood blocks all of it to, or most of it towards the uh, part here. And the fire is giving a whole glow. Uh, to that area, but not a specific highlight. That means that I can go with these folds here and shade to the left of them because the light from the fire is coming from the right hand side. So I'm very lightly 
going on top of both the purple and the yellow with my black pencil and I'm just darkening things up here where those folds run together um, here on the cord part I get a little darker than I do <coughs> on the upper parts and the more to the left I get the darker I can go to because the light is coming from the right and I gotta turn my book a bit And I'm just drawing in another fold here or I'm prolonging, I'm extending that fold. Same for the other fold here, shading it, because they are also curved, so the uh, part that goes towards the visible fold here is darker, because it is curved like that. The light coming from the right hand side, there's a shadow on this part, the light does not hit it. Also, it's behind another <coughs> fold, so I can go a little darker here. <coughs> Need another cough drop. There we go. The section here on the front is actually hit by the firelight. So to just distinguish the two curtains a bit more, I'm bringing in a little bit of black to the blue curtain. Not the purple though. And I'm only gonna shade here on the lower end where there is another fold. like so. Mm, the same goes for the lower part here. I'm gonna be a little more uh, careful with the shading down here in that section because the candle hits it, that part. And I'm also going to start to shade around the cord and the tassel here. Just going to have a little bit of a dark here. Hardly any because the light hits that part. It's a different kind of story here on this side of the curtain. So this is in the dark.
the wood does uh, sh cast a shadow on this part of the fabric so I can bring in the black the tassel also casts a shadow the cord and the tassel do also cast shadows on the upper part here so I'm just going to have a bit of dark underneath and to make it easier for myself again I have to turn my book and uh, shade underneath the cord but also in these folds here they have to be shaded and it is just way easier for me this way around it might be a little different for you if you're right-handed you might have less trouble than I do in these kinds of cases at least with these uh, one-sided coloring books if you have a double spread you're just gonna have the same trouble at the other side uh, than I do so I guess you know what I'm talking about there so the lower part here underneath and to the left of the tassel there's going to be a darker section and actually the light doesn't hit this section here so I just can go on top of all of that with a very light layer of the black and then bring in a bit of a well a heavier touch to have the folds be colored like so mm, and the same goes for this area here the light does not hit it at all the tassels and the wood and such they all cast a shadow on it so I'm going on top with a very light layer of black just to darken things up and I'm going to make it look a little softer here In some sections I'm going to bring in a, another layer of the black because there's the dark shadows here behind that fold and to the left of that tassel. Okay, um, there's a little uh, light coming from right hand side on this part but still uh, Claire and Jamie and so on are casting a shadow so it's just the candle and that lets me darken up the um, section of this fabric from the left hand side just a little bit there's enough of the light still going on here Okay, that's the curtain. Now I can work on the tassel. And for that, I'm going to take the yellow and the yellow ochre and the gold. And I'm actually, so far, I'm not very much behind. So maybe I'm even able to fit in uh, maybe the candle or something. Uh, one more tiny little bit to color 
We'll see. No promises yet, but on my clock it's 40 minutes and I had a little break because I was talking to my mom, so it's maybe 50 minutes that I got. I don't know. So, but first I have to... Uh, sharpen my pencil. I don't like the gold pencil. It uh, breaks, the lead is breaking all the time. So let's try once more. There we go. I'm getting there. Okay, this is as far as I'm gonna go for now. <coughs> so, now that I got them all sharpened, I can go in with a layer of the same yellow that I used for all the other uh, yellow and golden bits in all the curtains and give this a base layer And now I can go on top with the yellow ochre and bring in some contrast there, some, some light and dark. I'm shading towards the left hand side because again the light is coming from the right both from the candle and the uh, fireplace so I am going to shade towards the left And of course, again, I have to turn my page. I'm almost done with <laughs> that section here. Oh. Thank God I'm uh, leaving the videos in real time and not in uh, speed coloring. There is no time-lapsed videos here. Otherwise, you would get sick with all the turning back and forth of my book here. Going in to add a little more of the yellow. And then I'm going to bring in the black too. Very little only here on the 
darker side. So I don't want the tassels to look flat and once I have the gold on top I cannot really add anything else because uh, I have to go with quite the pressure to have the glimmer and shimmer transfer to the paper. So to separate the two tassels from each other here you can see in this direction maybe a bit better like here to bring one in front of the other going to have a little bit of a black um, outline almost but very fuzzy though in this part and here I'm going to bring in a bit of the dark where the knots do shade each other a lot like the part of that um, uh, cord so here and since this is the shaded part already there's hardly any light hitting Okay, now I can bring in the gold and put it on top. And for that I'm going to use a medium heavy hand. And I'm just going to add the gold where you would actually see shimmer when the light hits it. And that is not on this part here, just a very little bit here. And then towards the uh, right hand side here on those tassels and I'm uh, looking against the light to see where the shimmer is to um, to know where I have to maybe add a bit more of the golden where um, there's already enough gold there there we go see I didn't um, shade the tassel with gold all the way to the left because the light won't hit things there but I can darken up these parts here with the um, yellow ochre and also a bit of the black darken things <coughs> adding a bit more of the yellow ochre can hardly put anything down anymore paper is saturated here so I have to leave it at that. And looking at the clock, I can actually go on and um, have at least a little bit of the candle uh, colored, uh, not the wood, the wood I'm going to do in the next video. I will probably not be able to finish that, but I can move on a little more. Or am I going to... No, I'm going to finish the rest next week in uh, the final part. I think that is uh, enough for now. Let me zoom out. I don't have to always have two hour long videos. I can have all the rest here colored next time round. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. The uh, blog post is up by now where all the pencils are listed that I used today and where you can see close-up photos 
of the section that I colored. And uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and uh, join me next week for the final part of this coloring page. And uh, take good care, have fun, have an awesome week and uh, I will see you very soon. Bye.